So before starting off, I would request each and every one of you to please close your eyes for a brief moment since there's going to be a short audio clip being played. Now, I would like to ask, how many of you could actually understand what was being said in the clip? And I would please request you not to raise your hand since I wouldn't know. So just say either yes or no if you understood it or not. Okay, so you'll come to know about it in a bit. Now please open your eyes. Hello everyone, I'm Bhuvika Agrawal, a visually impaired tech enthusiast. And today I'm here to talk about my journey. A journey filled with ups and downs, but with the help of my parents, teachers and mentor support, I could make it through. Let me take you back in time. I was born premature, which left me blind from both eyes. Till the age of four, I relied on tactile to learn my alphabets. What are tactile? Tactile is something which can be touched and felt. It can be done either on a cardboard or on a simple piece of paper. There are various forms like tactile letters, diagrams, and many more. Since this method required a lot of human effort, it was not really convenient to go about this way. At the age of five, I was introduced to Braille. Braille is a form of tactile only. There is a piece of paper with dots on it, and each dot corresponds to a specific alphabet or number. The machine consists of a space bar at the center and three buttons on either side of it. Each button would correspond to a specific dot. For maths, I used a special kind of slate. It is a square piece which has holes in it. There are various types given on the side. The types are fitted into the holes in various positions which corresponds to digits, numbers, and symbols like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Now, this was also not really convenient. Let me tell you why. Firstly, typing on Braille is very time consuming, and my hands used to pain a lot. And the math slate was too small, and it had limitations. You can't perform all mathematical operations on it. In grade three, I was introduced to computers. With the help of my amazing mentors, I could perform various tasks on a computer. From simple, such as writing a Word document, making PowerPoint presentations, to more complex, like surfing the net, browsing, writing emails, watching YouTube, and so on. How do I do it? I used a screen reader called JAWS. Now, I'm not talking about the JAWS, which is on either side of your face, connecting your teeth bone. This JAWS is a screen reader. A screen reader is anything which reads aloud the text on a computer screen. It can even read input from the keyboard. This made my life so much easier. Now, how did I study by it? I used a scanner. We all might have used scanner once in a while to convert printed documents into Word or PDF. I did exactly the same. I scanned all my printed books and it got converted into Word document. And this way, it was very much readable by the screen reader. However, it had some challenges. The scanner couldn't scan images properly. 
and sometimes it could skip either lines, paragraphs, or sometimes even pages of text. I once scanned a history book, and when I went to read it, my screen reader first read about the emancipation of slaves in 1700s, and then about Abraham Lincoln being the president. I was shocked. Upon examining with my parents, we got to know that the scanner had missed a whole paragraph of events. I, along with my parents, started to fit in all the missing parts which were missed by the scanner. This not only happened in history, but in various subjects. Now coming to math, the scanner couldn't even scan math properly. The screen reader would read x square plus y square as x carrot 2 plus y carrot 2. And to my younger self, it sounded more like a recipe for a vegetable soup. In grade 6, I was introduced to latex. It is an advanced technology which uses a small piece of code entered in a Microsoft Word document. On pressing a small keyboard shortcut, it converts the written code into mathematical form. It is not only visually appealing as on normal print, but also readable by the screen reader. For this, I was introduced to NVDA, Non-Visual Desktop Access. It is another type of screen reader, and it is the one which you heard in the audio clip. Now let me come back to my question on what was being played on the audio, audio clip. Well, it was just reading about itself, like non-visual desktop access, the version number, the URL, copyright information, etc. The rate or the speed of the screen reader can be adjusted as per individual needs. I like to use it at this speed because it helps me to keep up with the pace of the ongoing class. Plus, slow reading would make it very slow and it would be a lot of time consuming. However, for beginners, they usually prefer slow speed and with lot of practice, they get comfortable listening to it in high speed. Another technology which I learned was using smartphone. How? With the help of another screen reader, with a stock bag. It is a built-in screen reader for Android and it comes with every Android device. With a few simple hand gestures, the talk back could help me access the phone like others would. I could connect with friends on social media such as WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, etc. Use apps independently like Swiggy, Zomato, Book My Show, etc. A few special apps on the phone made my life much more easier. Be My Eyes. It is a volunteering app. It is available on Play Store. Thousands of people all across the world sign in as volunteers. What you have to do is just help another blind person with a specific task. When you, as a blind user, make a call from the app, you are connected to the first available volunteer in your preferred language. The tasks are pretty simple, such as reading labels, identifying colors, describing objects, etc. The app is free of cost. All you need is, is a willingness to help. Another app which is quite useful is Seeing AI. As the name suggests, it uses artificial intelligence to describe images, objects, etc. I was quite fascinated with this magic of technology and AI combined. With this, I got interested in computer programming. I be began my programming journey in 8th grade. 
I learned programming languages such as Java, Python, C, C++, web development, and so on. I aim to dive deeper in the field of artificial intelligence and machine learning in the future. Now comes a big challenge, which is the JE exam. It is a competitive exam for engineering colleges in India. With the help of my laptop, my screen readers, and determination, I could utilize all online resources available on the internet, converted books into Word document, which made math so much more readable. For the exam, I used a scribe. Since the exam had negative marking, and there were, of course, a lot of diagram questions, I had to skip those because I couldn't take any risk. The competition was tough because the questions which I could attempt were lesser to qualify. Now comes J Advance, which felt like climbing Mount Everest on roller skates. The number of questions which had diagrams were a lot more. I'd say I could only do four questions out of a bunch of 17. On the day of the exam itself, I was very sure that I won't get into IIT. Yet, I'm proud to say that I secured admission at Indian Institute of Information Technology, Lucknow, where I'm currently pursuing Bachelor of, Te Bachelor of Technology in the branch of Information Technology. I would like to say that technology has been my greatest ally, and it can be for many children with disabilities. I am here sharing my story with you today, not just as a visually impaired tech enthusiast, but as someone who believes that technology, when armed with determination, can turn challenges into victories. I hope to inspire many other children with disabilities to pursue their dreams and become independent. My message for you today is technology is great, but it's not everything. It is a tool, but not a solution. It is up to us to use technology wisely and responsibly to enhance humanity and not replace it, to create a better future and not destroy it. As society, we must strive to be more empathetic and inclusive. Just because technology is helping people with disabilities to achieve their dreams, this doesn't mean that people don't need to be in inclusive and empathetic. Just playing small parts like creating accessible software or as simple as describing images can go a long way. Let's create a society in which everyone has equal opportunities and access to technology. It is up to us to use technology in a way that empowers everyone. Let us use technology but not forget who we are and what truly matters because it is we who have the wisdom to see beyond limitation. It is we who have the heart to love and help each other. I would like to quote a saying which my mentor has said, we succeed when we help others succeed. This is one of my aims in life. I would like to help as many people as I can on my way. Thank you for listening to me today.